In today's video, I'm going to go more in depth on how to wire the second battery to your controller for the front hub motor upgrade. I went over this briefly in my original install video. It's pretty simple to do, but I understand the concerns people have about doing the wiring without any instructions, especially if you've never done anything like this before. So I'm going to go more in depth on what options you have for splicing the power cable to your front hub controller. So this is the power cable that comes with your battery. Sometimes you have a T-plug and sometimes you have an XT60. So an XT60 has a male and a female, just like the T-plug does, uh, but it's a little bit better connection, a little bit more secure and easier to take on and off. Uh, you don't have to worry about the positive hitting the negative and vice versa, and it's just really a better connection. But my battery came with the T-plug connection, so that's what I wired for. If you want to do it a different way or you want to use the XT connection, you can. Um, but you do have this plug and you have an adapter that you can get instead of cutting anything. So essentially this just plugs into the XT60 connection and converts it to a T-plug. Now you don't need any of this if you have the other cable. Um, but I'm just showing you the other options that you have. Now you can get an XT60 connection that has bare wires on one end and then the plug on the other. Uh, those are on Amazon. And I'll leave a link in the description to that and everything else in this video. So if you need that information, it's down there. So I've already done this install. I'm just going to redo it. I needed to do it better anyway. So I did crimp them. That's my preferred method to install wiring. That's just how I've always done it. So you'll need a set of these wire crimpers, they're fairly inexpensive. You can get a set at Walmart for less than $10. So if you already have wire strippers, you won't necessarily need the wire stripping part. You can just get the crimp tool, but this one has a combination of stripping and crimping. The stripping's at the top, it'll strip the wire like so. And then you'll need a package of crimp connectors. You can get smaller packs at Walmart, but this big pack is about the same price. And then you get a whole lot more. So each size is for a different size wire. We're gonna go with the red one today. Basically the metal part inside the red connector, as you can see there, it's kind of set inside the connector. So you stick your wire in there and you crimp down a little bit past that lip. And then once you crimp down on that, it should squeeze the wire together and basically hold it in place. Now this is just me fitting, trying to figure out which one's the best. This is what you'll want to do as well, because the wiring for each setup is going to be a little bit different. Now your wire should come stripped already. I'm just restripping mine since I've already used that connection. I always like to start out with a fresh one. So basically the way you strip is you just kind of twist your stripping tool. And if you do it right, it should easily slide off like this. And then you just toss that in the trash. Now I'm using heat shrink tube to cover up the connector once I'm done. So you want to slide that over your wire before you start anything. If you're going to use that method, I would recommend using that method. Um, but you can use electrical tape as well if you just want to go over your connector. Now you don't have to do either of those, but just in case it slips off, it's always nice to have a little bit more security. So now we're putting the connector on the wire and crimping it down. So you don't want to go right on the edge and you do want to test your connection to make sure everything's good before you finish it out. Um, but push the wire through and then squeeze the, the middle part there, not the edge, but in the middle a little bit right past the lip. And you squeeze down real hard and that should make a good connection. And then once you're done, you'll slide that heat shrink tube over the connector and then you'll take your heat gun and heat up the heat shrink tube and it'll shrink down over the connector. You can also use a hair dryer or a lighter or something, some kind of heat source. But the heat gun is going to be your best option. And it just basically secures everything and makes it look nice. And then you don't have to worry about your wires coming out and, and hitting anything metal. And that's the last step other than plugging your T-plug into your battery. If you found this video helpful, go down and leave a like. If you have any questions, go down to the comment section. And I am starting a Discord channel, so I will have a link right at the top of the description for that. And Discord is just a big chat room where you can come and interact. I have a bunch of different categories. I have all the e-bike brands on there 
And if you have any that are not on there, you can message me and I'll add them. But I would like to have you guys in here. If you have a PC or a Mac, you can go download the Discord app. If you have an iPhone or Android, they also have an app for that. And you can come in there anytime, post pictures, interact, just like you would on a Facebook group. But it's actually going to be better. So I'm going to start another video tomorrow. I'm going to do a throttle only test on the Aerial Rider Rideal. So stay tuned for that. That should be coming up here in the next couple days. And that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you haven't already, go hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell so you can be notified when I upload. And I'll see you all in the next one.